The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Where do we go to be nourished spiritually, mentally, emotionally? A spa? A good G.K. Chesterton book? A BBC masterpiece series? The church? In many ways, we become what we are fed. Sunday after Sunday, many of us come to Mass to be fed not only by the Eucharist, but also by the living Word of God. You see, Scripture comes alive with various stories of how God is intimately involved in the lives of his people. Stories that show struggles of people and how God lifts them up when they are most vulnerable, when they are exhausted by the trials and challenges of life. In our first reading from the book of Kings, we see Elijah, God's faithful and fiery prophet, who, after battling and overcoming false prophets, is now running for his life. Elijah had managed to ruffle some feathers. He shook the comfortable life of those who found ref refuge not in the God of Israel, but in false idols. The king's wife, Jezebel, the power behind the throne of the northern kingdom of Israel, wants Elijah dead. Now Elijah sits under the broom tree after a day, day's journey into the desert, and he has had it. He prays, This is enough, Lord. Take my life. But when Elijah is at his lowest, God's messenger comes not only once but twice 
with food and water and urges him to eat and continue his journey. And that's what he does. He obeys God's messenger and takes the nourishment. As the story goes, Elijah's journey culminates in Mount Horeb, also called Sinai, where he encounters God, not in the fierce wind or the rumblings of an earthquake or a consuming fire, but in the voice that emerges out of sheer silence. In that voice, God tames the fiery prophet. In the silence of the desert, God's word to Elijah is to anoint others, to be an agent of healing and holiness. Today's gospel, according to John, takes us to another desert, to another incident where God intervenes, not through a messenger, but through God's own word made flesh, through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus professes to be the bread that came down from heaven, which echoes God's promise in Isaiah 50 of the nourishing word that comes down from heaven. And let us recall that the entire Gospel of John starts with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God, and the Word became flesh and dwells among us. The source of the nourishing word is a stumbling block for the people in today's gospel. The people think they know Jesus' human nature quite well, failing to realize his divine nature. And another stumbling block for the people is Jesus' manner of teaching. He does not preach in Elijah's fire and brimstone way, as we see in the gospel story of the Samaritan woman and Nicodemus. Jesus waits for God to draw open hearts to God's self, meeting people where they're at and having patience with them as he accompanies them in their journey of faith, from unbelief to belief, from distrust to trust, from isolation to integration in community. Jesus does not run away from engaging others in dialogue. There is listening and learning, and above all else, there is presence, God's word drawing others into the divine life. This 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are all invited to see how intricately connected the Eucharist is to the nourishing word we receive in Scripture. God's way of teaching and challenging us to bring the incarnate word into our lives and the lives of others. Are we agents of healing, peace, and comfort to others who long for words of nourishment when the going gets tough? Those who, like Elijah, feel like giving up defeated by the challenges of life? Have we offered a prayer of thanksgiving for those who have tamed us when we felt like giving in to bitterness, to fury, to anger, to insults and resentments? Using St. Paul's words, 
have we been imitators of God, being kind to one another, compassionate, and forgiving one another as God has forgiven us in Christ? Brothers and sisters, the Word of God is life-giving. The Word of God is alive in our world today. We can choose to be taught by God or numb it with worldly things. In many ways, we become what we are fed. Be not afraid of opening, reading, and studying the Bible to be spiritually fed by God's Word. It is the Word of God that leads us from the ambo to the altar every Mass. Today we learn more about Jesus' nourishing Word as food for the pilgrimage when we leave the Church. Next Sunday, we continue the second half of the Bread of Life discourse, giving emphasis on the Eucharistic nourishment. Both remind us that there is no growth in a relationship without love, and no love without learning from God's Word. So tune in.